Wilhelm Zahn was born on July 29, 1910 in the Bavarian town of Ebensfelde. Not much is known about Zahn, with scant information about him online. He doesn't even have an entry in the German language Wikipedia. Nevertheless, we do know that he joined the Reichsmarine or Navy in 1930, where he eventually joined the U-boat division. He was first watch officer on board U-33 from July 1936 to September 1937 followed by the same post on board U-35 from September 1937 to October 1938. Those two years of pre-war experience on U-boats meant he was well poised to become a U-boat commander, which he did when he was finally promoted to Corvette Capitaine on April 1, 1943. We know a lot more about U-56, the U-boat for which Zahn was the first commander. It was a Type 2C U-boat typical of the generation of U-boats that fought in the early stages of the Second World War. The Type 2C submarine was a larger version of the original Type 2 U-boat. This U-boat was 144 feet or 43.90 meters in total length and 27 feet 7 inches or 8.40 meters in height. Powered by two MWMRS 127S four-stroke six-cylinder diesel engines and two Siemens Schuckert PGVV 32236 double-acting electric engines, U-56 had a maximum surface speed of 12 knots, equating to 14 miles or 22 kilometers per hour. Its maximum submerged speed was 7 knots, or 8.1 miles or 13 kilometers per hour. Built at the Deutsche Werke Yard in the Baltic port of Kiel, U-56 was launched on September 3, 1939, just three days into the war, and finally commissioned under command of Wilhelm Zahn on the 26th of November that year. The sub was initially assigned to the 5th U-boat, after which she was reassigned to the 1st U-boat flotilla for operations. At the end of her career, U-56 had carried out 12 war patrols and sunk three ships, namely Rudol, a Swedish vessel, Anto, a ship from Finland, and the British ship Boma, totaling 8,860 gross register tons, or GRT. It also sank one auxiliary warship, the Royal Navy's HMS Transylvania, which came in at just under 17,000 tons. U-56 also inflicted damage on a further vessel, the British ship Eskdeen, this U-boat was fitted with three 21-inch torpedo tubes at the bow and a 0.79-inch anti-aircraft gun. U-56 could accommodate a crew of 25, making this generation of U-boats considerably smaller than the generation of U-boats that followed later in the war. Ironically, it was this earlier, more sluggish, and smaller generation of U-boats that saw greatest success. Their collective toll on Allied shipping, both military and merchant, was devastating in the early years of the Second World War. It was only by mid-1943 that the Allies started getting an upper hand in the Battle of the Oceans, even as the U-boats got bigger and more powerful. An early devastating attack occurred just after midnight on October 14, 1939 at Scapa Flow in the center of Scotland's Orkney Islands. It was just into the sixth week of the war and HMS Royal Oak was anchored that night when torpedoed by U-47. The British Revenge-class battleship sank, resulting in the death of 835 men and boys who were on board. The sinking of HMS Royal Oak was a terrible blow to British morale so early in the war. Not surprisingly, the sinking of the British battleship was a huge triumph for Nazi Germany. It made the commander of U-47, Gunther Preen, into a national celebrity. He would be the first German U-boat officer awarded the highly prestigious Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross. So how did Churchill nearly die? The date in question was the morning of October 30th, 1939, a mere two weeks after the sinking of HMS Royal Oak. Commander Wilhelm Zahn was at the helm of U-56. His U-boat was prowling the waters just to the west of, would you believe it, the Orkney Islands. The German high command was convinced that a U-boat could repeat the success of a fortnight prior. Wilhelm Zahn brought up his periscope and almost immediately caught sight of a flotilla of Royal Navy ships. This entourage included HMS Nelson and HMS Rodney, two large battleships that were of fundamental importance to the British home fleet in 1939. The 29-year-old commander was no doubt hyper-excited about emulating his fellow U-boat officer, and national hero, of course, Gunther Preen. 
However, Wilhelm Zahn couldn't begin to know just what a huge prize awaited him in one of those battleships. That's because no less than Winston Churchill was on board HMS Nelson at that very moment. Ironically, Churchill was on that battleship discussing none other than what had happened just two weeks before to HMS Royal Oak. He was in discussion with most of the Royal Navy's high command, including the Admiral of the Home Fleet, Sir Charles Forbes, and Sir Dudley Pound, the first Sea Lord. It should be noted that there were no less than 11 British destroyers in the area protecting the two large battleships. Wilhelm Zahn's efforts at zigzagging between all these military ships could be considered quite extraordinary. Suddenly, the fleet of ships veered course by about 20 to 30 degrees, meaning that they were heading straight for U-56. At the forefront of this British formation was HMS Rodney, a Nelson-class battleship, and a notoriously leaky one at that, by the way. Anyway, Zahn let that ship go past him, concentrating instead on the two larger battleships coming up behind it. That included HMS Nelson, of course, the ship on which Churchill was busy liaising with the Navy's top brass while no doubt chomping on a cigar as he usually did. At just 800 meters distance, Zahn knew that the chance of one of his torpedoes hitting HMS Nelson was excellent. Zahn would later be quoted as saying that the situation was an ideal setup, being akin to a practice shoot. Three torpedoes were discharged towards HMS Nelson, the German U-boat crew listened on their hydrophones for the distinctive booms of underwater explosions. Instead, no explosions could be heard. All that was faintly heard was two of the torpedoes hitting the side of HMS Nelson, but no exploding. The third torpedo probably missed altogether. The German crew must have been horrified that not one but two of their torpedoes had failed on impact with their target. However, those bumps and pinging sounds on the side of their ship was enough to alert those on board HMS Nelson that something was lurking in the water. They immediately started to take evasive action and steam for the U-boat. Zahn would later recall how launching a further torpedo attack was impossible, since the British battleships were now poised to counterattack U-56. Zahn had no option but to immediately order his submarine to dive deep and make his way into the North Sea. And so it was that two faulty torpedoes failed to detonate on impact. And with that, the life of Winston Churchill was spared. What happened to Wilhelm Zahn's U-boat and those faulty torpedoes was nothing new in the Nazi German Navy. It was so bad that it was dubbed the Torpedo Crisis, or Torpedo Krise in German, as discussed in the paper Wolves Without Teeth, the German Torpedo Crisis in World War II by the historian David Habersham Wright. According to Wright, the number of technical malfunctions that German U-boats suffered with their torpedoes was catastrophic. These malfunctions were especially rife during the first few years of World War II. These were critical years since they were at a time when Germany had a huge advantage over the Allies in the Atlantic Ocean. As Wright notes, by the time they corrected these malfunctions it was too late, since the Allies were by then gaining the advantage on the high seas. Germany had simply not been able to capitalize on their U-boat superiority in the early years of the war. In the words of Wright, seen through this light, the torpedo crisis assumes great importance as being a significant obstacle that slowed the German march to potential victory. This contention is echoed by other historians, including Kajus Becker and Franz Karofsky, the latter of who believed that these torpedo failures cost the Germans absolute and decisive results. Wilhelm Zahn was so upset by the botched attack that he took several hours before reporting the incident to U-boat command later that evening. It was only that night that he ordered his U-boat to surface. It turns out that had Zahn reported the failed torpedoes immediately, there was another U-boat nearby, U-58, which could have taken up the attack in the place of U-56. Luck was undoubtedly on the side of Winston Churchill and all British officers and crew that day. Zahn fell into an even greater depression when it later transpired that Churchill himself had been on board HMS Nelson that day. Almost immediately, Wilhelm Zahn would become known among his peers as the man who almost killed Churchill. Zahn became so deeply depressed that the usually unforgiving admiral of the German Navy, Karl Donitz, took pity on Zahn and temporarily relieved him of his captaincy of U-56. Zahn would spend some time in Germany working as an instructor to get over his depression. Behind closed doors, the Nazi leadership would have no doubt been bitterly disappointed at how close they'd come to killing Churchill. 
the Germans were obsessed with getting rid of him. Attempts on his life included hiding a bomb in a chocolate bar intended for Churchill. One known attempt to kill Churchill in 1943 included shooting down a plane flying from Lisbon in June of that year because one of the passengers happened to resemble Churchill. Another attempt in 1943 was an operation codenamed Long Jump in which a commando was trained to kill Churchill during an Allied conference in Tehran, Iran. The Nazis wanted Churchill dead. How close they came that day on the high seas. Karl Dunitz would later write about the incident in his memoirs, calling it an exceptionally serious failure but never blaming Zahn for it. He wrote about how Zahn had shown great daring and bravery when surrounded by multiple escorting destroyers. Dunitz was also very aware of the wretched G7E torpedoes and their high failure rates, something he wrote about many times in his diaries. Wilhelm Zahn would recover and be given full command of another submarine, U-69. However, Zahn came under fire in January 1942 when it transpired that he had patrolled the waters for 30 days off Newfoundland and the U.S.'s eastern seaboard without a single sinking. This time, Karl Dönitz himself was not forgiving. The Admiral made a scathing assessment about Zahn, stating, Although opportunities presented themselves, the commander once again has had no success. This cannot be attributed solely to lack of luck. The commander lacks skill both in general operations and in attacking. A most intriguing parlor game of what if one could play regarding the Second World War would be this. What if U-56 had successfully sunk HMS Nelson on October 30th, 1939, thereby killing Winston Churchill? There is no doubt that his death at the very commencement of the war would have been a massive blow to British morale. His death would have meant the loss of a passionate and commanding voice and morale-rising presence during the German Blitz of London and other parts of Britain. Remember, throughout 1940 and 1941, Britain was on a back foot and the Nazis were triumphing. Churchill was a powerful presence of resilience for the British people. It is also well documented how hard Churchill lobbied for the United States to join, with many citing his rousing address to the United States Congress on December 26, 1941 as being a pivotal reason why the U.S. joined, the attack at Pearl Harbor aside. One can speculate endlessly, but there is no denying that the Allied cause without Winston Churchill during World War II would have been a very different affair. Ultimately, there is no denying this. The failure of those two torpedoes from U-56 on that fateful October morning in 1939 ranks as one of the greatest what-if moments in modern history.